welcome back to my furniture painting YouTube channel. This week's video is a repaint of this piece. Here's my inspo pick, so we're going to change it up with a little bit of colour using chalk mineral paint. I'm going to start by using a mixture of very thick paint and to get that I'm going to use Dixie Bell's Sea Spray which is a texture additive. So this bright orange colour is going to be my base colour and that's the colour that I want to see when I distress the green. So I'm just adding some into a measuring cup and then I'm going to add some Sea Spray which is a powder texture additive and I'm going to add a whole load of that into my Florida orange paint to get a really thick mixture. Just make sure to give it a really good stir so that you mix all the texture additive together. And originally this piece was painted in chalk mineral paint and sealed with howdy do hemp oil. Now this was done quite a considerable time ago and it's well and truly cured by now. So I'm going straight over the top. I also don't mind if I do see a little bit of that black um, original colour underneath. However, if you've freshly applied How To Do Hemp Oil and you want to paint over it, it's a good idea to give it a wipe down with white spirits or mineral spirits first. So what I'm doing with my very thick paint mixture is just applying it on with a natural bristle brush. This is a premium chip brush from Dixie Bell. And what this is gonna do is give me lots and lots of texture that when I distress back is going to be visible through the green paint. So I'm just concentrating it in the areas that I want to see orange. I'm not going to paint it all over the piece, but I'm concentrating it, especially around the bottom. I want the orange to be a little bit more prominent around the bottom. And then I've also applied it thickly on some of the door edges and drawer edges as well. Random application is the key when you go in for this kind of look. The last thing you want is a really uniform kind of look and it all to look the same once it's distressed. You want to apply your paint in some areas really thickly, in other areas a little bit thinner and also use a combination of applying it with a brush, stippling it on. You can also use a spatula if you want a really heavily applied textured base. So I let that sit overnight and that's because I've applied the paint so thickly in areas. I just wanted to ensure that it was 100% dry before I started with my next colour which is Tree Frog Green. So the reason these two colours are working so well together in my inspiration picture is because they are opposites on the colour wheel. So green and orange really pop together. So I'm going straight in with my tree frog green. I'm using a synthetic brush here because I'm not trying to build up any texture. I'm just trying to get a full coverage of tree frog green. I only use one coat of this. You can see in areas it's not as great coverage as others, but because we're going for a really heavily distressed kind of chippy layered look, that doesn't matter at this stage. The idea is just to get this paint on in a very kind of haphazard way. Um, again, the more sort of random, the better, because those brush strokes are going to help you when you distress later. I've also gone over the handles for an, uh, intentional purposes. Again, I let that coat fully dry before going in with my third coat of paint. So I'm using Tree Frog Green, but I'm also going to slightly darken it with Palmetto, which is another chalk paint colour, and when it wants to actually come out of the jar. And I'm going to mix those two together, and that's just going to give me a slightly darker shade of green, because going back to my inspo pick, there are a couple of different shades of green within the door. It's not just orange with green over the top. There's a lighter green and I can also see a darker green there as well. Again, I'm just gonna apply this quite thickly and haphazardly over the top of my previous green. You can't really pick up on camera the difference between the two greens here for some reason, but it is considerably darker. But if you did want to make it a little bit more dark, you could obviously add a little bit more palmetto or you could also add some black in there to darken it further. I just like this quite subtle comparison because don't forget we have got the orange that's gonna come through in a sec as well. 
As you can see, I'm not really being precious with the application of this. I'm also going over the handles, which have also got a little bit of that tree frog green on as well. Again, I'm hoping that'll add to the distress look in a second. So up until this point, it's actually not taken me very long at all to create this look so far. It's just been layers of paint, which have been allowed to dry in between. This is the bit that took me the longest. And the reason for that is because I stupidly left this to dry overnight. Now with chalk mineral paint, it dries extremely durable and it's quite tough. So ideally, I like to only leave this a couple of hours before I distress. This blade is incredibly sharp and I'm hoping it's gonna give me that kind of distressed chippy look as the kind of inspo pic showed um, on the door. But like I say, I would have made my life a lot easier if I hadn't have left to, this to dry overnight, but I was losing the light and I didn't want to risk not being able to pick it up on camera. So I did leave it overnight to dry, which made my life considerably more difficult. So in terms of how to distress a piece, um, there's really quite a lot of choices. I'm using this blade because it's going to give me quite an aggressive chippy look. You can also use sandpaper. Um, you can use an electric sander, which I've used in the past as well. What I do tend to find with an electric sander though, as much as I enjoy doing it because it's a faster way of getting that look, is that it can look a little bit too uniform. So this way, although it's taking me a lot longer, it's hopefully just going to look a little bit more authentic. So when I do distress around drawers and doors, I always make sure that I do the edges because those are the parts that would get worn and torn the most if this was an authentic kind of old distress piece. So I always make sure like my emphasis is around those areas. I also make sure I take the drawer, that's a nice headshot, take the drawer out of the carcass and then kind of give the sort of frame a little bit of a distress as well because that would also be a part that got you know naturally worn and torn and distressed it also just helps define the drawers just make sure you are careful when you're using one of these blades that you don't sort of go too heavy-handed because you can quite easily catch a corner and go all the way back to bare wood which isn't a problem in my case i quite like that look but these blades are pretty sharp as I've mentioned before in my videos where I do this kind of look, I think variation is the key. So for some of the areas, I'm going to just give them a light sand, especially on the handles. Obviously, the original color of these handles is black. Now I have gone over the top of them with green paint. So I'm just using a sanding sponge, which is equivalent to a 220 grit to just remove the majority of the paint and then leave it in some areas, just to give the impression that the handles, you know, are old and battered, as well as the paint. You all know I'm a wax gal, so this is gonna have a wax treatment to finish it off. Chalk mineral paint is extremely durable and doesn't actually require a top coat, but lots of people do add it for aesthetics or to add a little bit of extra durability and to help clean the piece. So I am using Best Time Wax in clear with a blue sponge to apply a clear coat of wax first. If you've seen some of my older videos, you'll know that anything that's got a sort of flat surface like this, I'll usually use a sponge to apply my wax versus a brush, just because I find it quicker, it doesn't leave any streaks, and I just find it a lot easier. And is any grunge piece complete without black wax? And the answer is no. So I let my piece sit for about half an hour with the clear wax on, and then I went in with a premium chip brush this is I had to think about that one I'm using a premium chip brush which has got natural bristles which is what is traditionally used to apply wax and I'm just going to go around any recessed areas like this one on the door and I'm just going to quite liberally apply some black wax once that has been applied I will then not put any extra product on my brush and she says as she dips her brush in the black wax um, but what I generally do is apply my thickest part of the black wax, so the area that I want the most emphasis, and then 
gently kind of blend it out with the brush as much as I can. There you go. That's what I'm doing, blending it out. So that you don't get any harsh lines. You don't get a sort of thick layer of wax and then nothing. This is just going to help it kind of fade away into the black wax. Again, for me, I'm not going to put black wax over the entire piece. I'm just going to concentrate it on recessed areas and in sort of corners and edges. If you wanted to put black wax all over it, you could, but obviously that's going to darken the paint colour and you don't get as much contrast in the areas where you've applied black wax versus no black wax. So for me, I like that contrast. So again, I just apply it heavily in areas and not so heavy in other areas. And some areas I just leave completely black wax free. So with my little bit of shop cloth that I'm kind of waving around, I am then going to kind of buff away at the excess wax. So once you've applied your wax, you need to let it sit for about 20 minutes or half an hour and then go in with a lint-free rag that's dry or a piece of shop cloth like this and you can see the excess coming off. So that always happens with wax. If you don't remove the excess, what happens is it just kind of goes a little bit sticky and tacky. It won't fully dry and it'll just kind of stay there sticky and tacky and not dry properly so you have to remove that excess you have to give it a buff and that also gives it that really nice sheen as well you'll also notice that i'm rubbing the areas where the black wax kind of fades into the clear wax again that's just going to help haze that line so that there aren't any sort of harsh lines where the black wax finishes so once you've buffed it off, if there are any areas that you want to basically emphasize with that black wax, you can add a little bit more in certain areas and then just repeat the process. So because this cabinet looks like it'd be some kind of media cabinet or maybe like a small sideboard, what I'm gonna do is just give the top a little bit more protection than what I've given the rest of the piece. Because I am thinking perhaps a customer might wanna put, I don't know, a TV on it, or even things like a plant pot and stuff. So I'm gonna just give it a little bit more protection just to be on the safe side. So I'm using clear coat in satin and I applied two coats of this with a foam and dandy brush. I'm using the largest foam and dandy brush because I've got a large flat surface. I'm just gonna basically lay it all out as fast as I can on the surface. I'm not being too precious about the application at this stage. And then once it's all down, what I tend to do is then just go, oh, just make sure there's no bits in it. Make sure I go over the top with a really, really light hand once I've got a layer of the clear coat down and before it started to dry, I just go over the top with a very, very light hand in one direction and that just makes sure you smooth any sort of lumpy bits out or any areas where you might have applied it thicker. It just smooths it out, and this is also sometimes known as laying off. So you're just making sure that the product is all going in one direction, and that gives you a nice smooth finish. I did two coats of the clear coat, and then left that to dry before adding a little bit of that black wax, just to make sure the top matches the rest of it. And I'm just gonna concentrate this around the very edges of the piece. So I'm just kind of using swirl marks. I'm using the same brush as before, and I'm just kind of using a swirl notion with my brush, just to kind of get the black wax concentrated around the edges, and then again, fading that out, sort of into the um, center of the piece. Obviously we don't have clear wax down on here, so I am relying on the clear coat underneath to act as a barrier, so it kind of does the same job as clear wax, if that makes sense. So we're not blending it into anything because obviously the clear coat has dried, but what I'm doing is I'm just slightly feathering that black wax so that it fades away to the center. Again, just to kind of blend that line out, I'm using a microfiber cloth and just buffing the excess of the black wax and like I say, blending that sort of harsh line out into the center. I also added some vintage book pages into the card holder handles for a little pop of white to contrast against the color. And here's some close-ups and the finished piece. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching and make sure you hit subscribe on my channel.